Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here, and today we're going to be looking at the Up Too High 7-in-1 docking station that includes the ability to put in your own SSD drive. Now, this docking station is almost identical to the Up Too High 6-in-1 docking station I've already reviewed, so I would highly recommend you watch that review if you're interested in getting information about HDMI out and things of that nature. We're not going to cover quite as much comprehensive information as we did there. Um, but we are going to show you how to take an existing SSD drive that maybe you booted to Windows on, install it into this guy, and uh, then we'll also show you how to start from scratch. So there's several different parts to this video. Let's take a look at the hardware though real quick. There's really nothing else here in the box. So let's take a look. Again, as I said, it's very, very similar in design to the other dock. It's a little bit longer, but the same rubber feet and everything are inside, and it will definitely accept a case on your deck. Now, again, you have these same sides, uh, but you'll notice that one of the USB ports is now 2.0 instead of 3.0. That's really the biggest difference outside, of course, of the fact that it does have a place to put an SSD drive. It's got the same big chunky plug, which I really, really like that. It's very comfortable. Uh, maybe even better than the official Steam Dock. Okay, so you just slide this guy open, and here is your slot to insert your own drive. The drive specs will be on the video here, so you know what to buy if you don't already have one. And uh, yeah, this looks exactly, almost exactly like the other one. So I've got an SSD drive here that I installed Windows on that I boot to when I want to play Modern Warfare 2. So we're going to take this one out, and uh, we're going to just transplant this drive right into this dock. Now, if all goes well, it'll simply just run, right? It'll just allow me to boot right to Windows, and it should be pretty darn fast, too. So I'm going to get this thing taken apart, and we will insert it into the unit. It slides in pretty well. Now, make sure you have the right type of drive. There's two different types of these drives. One will fit and one won't. I'll make sure you have the right information, though. Check the description and the video itself. So it slides in there, and then you need something to hold it down with, which is, which is what those little black things that they provided to you were. So one thing I found out is you don't put these in ahead of time. You put the drive in first, and then put the little holder in place. A lot of these you can uh, put the holder in, turn it, and then slide the, uh, the drive in there. But you can see it's nice and snug. And I left my thermal uh, pad on there. It doesn't look like there's any specific types of cooling involved here. So hopefully everything will be okay. Only time will tell though, and you probably won't know by the end of this video. But everything looks to be everything. It's nice and secure. Everything looks fine. So let's go ahead and put this guy together and uh, see how well it works. Okay, so now let's get everything pushed aside here and we will actually hook this guy up. Now I've got a little uh, station over here in my recording area that has a portable monitor uh, keyboard, mouse, all the sorts of things that you would uh, necessarily need for this sort of video. We're not going to use the HDMI out, but I just wanted to show you everything being plugged in. Now, again, with the USB 2.0 port, you may want to plug in one of your devices, such as a mouse or keyboard, into that one because you know you don't want to waste you don't want to waste a good USB 3.0 on something like a keyboard. You want to save those for something like uh, portable storage. Okay, so we're all hooked up here. It Again, it looks pretty good. And uh, there we go. I don't have a case on my deck, but uh, it's, uh, it's fine. It's good. Everything's nice and cozy. So now what we want to do is we just want to see if we can boot. We'll hold down the uh, volume button, and then we will um, power up. And that should take us to the boot menu. You don't have to hold it down the whole time. You only have to wait until after the beep. But newer... Um, Newer firmware upgrades took away the power on beep, so I just kept it held down. All right, so what we're looking for is a hard drive that looks to be like the one we had, and let's see if uh, this is it right here. Let's try it. Realtek RTL 92108. This should be it. Now, if everything goes well, it should pick up my existing Windows install, and bing, bang, boom, I'm in Windows. So far, so good. It's looking great. 
Go ahead and let this guy boot. I'm not time compressing it because I'd like you to be able to see how long it takes to boot into Windows using this dock. Not too bad. Faster than an SD card. Okay, there we go. It didn't like the fact that I shut it down improperly last time, that's fine, no big deal. Okay, so Windows looks great. Now I've got a one terabyte drive in here that has Modern Warfare 2 and Windows 10. I could make some room on this hard drive to store Steam games as well, right? So I could use the same hard drive in here to run Windows, Windows only games, as well as running Steam OS games. So let's make that happen. We're gonna go to desktop mode and let's take a look at what we see here for the drives. We do see the SSD drive down here listed with removable devices. And look, there's Windows. There's all those fun Windows folders, program files, everything that we wanted. So we can access, as an NTFS drive, we can access that here in the SteamOS side. That's pretty cool. So now we're gonna use um, the Partition Manager to uh, go ahead and shrink the Windows partition and make room for a SteamOS partition or an EXT4 partition. You will need to have a sudo password set for this. Just drop to the console, type passwd and set a password. Okay, so if we take a look here, there's our RTL 92108. And there is their standard boot partitions. And there's the NTFS partition. So we're gonna go ahead and unmount that so that we can do stuff to it. Then we're gonna resize it. So you can decide how much uh, free space you wanna leave, right? It's pretty simple. Just go into the box down below where it says free space after and set that to how big you want your Steam OS partition to be. So in my case, I kind of decided that I would leave more room for Windows and I set my free space to 400. And so you could like use the little radial buttons, but just type it in. You'll, you'll save a lot of time here. So <laughs> I'm just going to type in 400. And there's nothing to see here in advance, so we'll hit OK. Now it's an unknown partition. So now we're going to right click it, new. We're going to set it as a EXT4 partition, and we're going to give it a label. You want to probably give this a label and you'll find out why later. Probably an easy to type label. Um, I ended up doing this a couple of times. I ended up with SSD, not SSD Steam. Everything looks good. Now this everyone and only host shouldn't be here. Um, you won't see that. This was something I did before I realized I had to be on 3.4 stable. And um, so that's a little carryover. You won't see that. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So it goes ahead and it shrinks the partition and formats it. So let's go now to starting a fresh drive. And the reason I cut off here is because setting up the extra partition you just did on that drive is going to be the exact same way as setting up a partition fresh. So we're going to try not to duplicate information here. All right, so once again, um, we are in the KDE Partition Manager. And uh, we're going to type in our password. Uh, you have to have a password. You must have a password to get in here, right? There's no way to abort it or anything. If you want to run KD Partition Manager, you must have your pseudo password set. Okay, so I put a brand new fresh drive in here. No partitions at all. None, zero, zilch. You just bought the drive off Amazon. It showed up. You plugged it in. You turned it on, and this is what you get. So just like before, we're going to do a new partition, EXT4. And uh, we do want to set a label. Now, notice it didn't have those permission settings like you saw before. That's because this is 3.4 stable, the only one that actually works right. So uh, we're going to create the new partition. It's going to do its thing. Then we're going to mount it and open. Well, we will in a minute. There we go. Mount and open. There we go. Perfect. Now... There's our drive, SSD. It's empty aside from the lost plus found folder. And I think we're ready to get out of here. And let's launch Steam, right? Because this is what we really want to do. We want to be able to install Steam games here. We hit the plus, and it brings up this dialog box. You're going, okay, well, I, I, can, find, I can find my uh, SSD in here. It's probably under run, media, and deck. 
And there's the SSD. Perfect. Select that. Bah, wrong answer. Well, what's going on here? Well, there's a problem. There's not the proper permissions set there yet. So we're going to have to go to the console and uh, see, that didn't work. We're going to go to the console and we are going to change the permissions on that drive. So again, if you don't have a pseudo password already, go ahead and set that. So I've already done that. We're going to go to the location. Yeah, it's been a while since I've uh, used CLI here. So you're going to go into the, uh, the deck folder and find the SSD drive. And we're going to do a sudo chone deck SSD slash. And SSD, of course, is the name of the device and um, that we named it. And we had to enter our password. Now, the permission should be set. So when we add a folder now, ta-da! Perfect. Now it's actually behaving like we want it to do. Hit add. Boom. Now you go. You're good to go. Now, this is great, but it won't survive a reboot, right? So we could actually go in and tell Steam or tell the desktop that we always want SSD to mount on login and when we attach it. Well, we're not really attaching anything anymore, but technically speaking, that should make the SSD automatically boot. Uh, unfortunately, while it does, it only works in desktop mode. So if you boot to gaming mode, and who doesn't, and you want to play games that are installed on that SSD, and who doesn't, it's not going to mount. It'll mount here when you go to desktop. It'll be fine. But it will not survive a reboot. Now, if we were to flip over to gaming mode right now, right? If we were to just go to gaming mode, it'll survive, right? I cut out the, uh, the long period for you there. So if I go over to gaming mode now, it's there. It survived fine, but it won't survive a reboot. And nobody wants to boot their deck to gaming mode, go over to desktop mode, mount their drive, and then roll themselves back over to gaming mode. So we're going to go back to Scop. Scop was the guy that hooked us up with the shader cache killer. I have another video for that if you'd like to know more about that. He has provided us with a script that will do that on startup. See, it's gone now. I did a full reboot and it's gone, just to prove out that it doesn't work. So we're gonna go back to desktop mode and we're gonna go to Scop's website at GitHub and we are going to get his script that will do this auto mounting for us. All we have to do is copy this one curl command, go to the console, paste this guy in and run it. Do you want to install the mount service? Yes, it does it. You have to type in your password once again. Okay, now it wants to ask you if you want to do Z-mount. I said no this time because really Z-mount's only good for unmounting or mounting pure removable drives. In this case, it's not really useful. Let's do a full restart now. Back to gaming mode with a full restart and let's see if it's still here. Yes! Our SSD auto-mounted on power-up. This is fantastic. All right, that's it. That's all you really need to know to make the most of this up-to-high 7-in-1 dock. Uh, great little product. I hope you enjoyed looking at this video. I hope it helped you out. Uh, if it did, like, subscribe. You guys know what to do. Uh, this is uh, a neat little product. I like the idea of having a hard drive. I don't have to manually uh, insert and mount and everything else. It just works. All right, I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks always so much for watching and take care.